Yo, what's up, my people? Yeah, today we have a great episode, and um, we have someone we don't want to miss. It's right here in front of us. His name is Trent Brooks. So a little about him. Trent is a cancer survivor who beat the odds not once, not twice, but thrice, overcoming heat pain. Right? That's correct. Long, and three uh, times. Yeah and um, pancreatic um, cancer, despite being told by multiple specialists that he had like um, 5% chance of survival, mm -hmm. Trent refused to give up, man. That's right. And trained his mind to believe he could beat cancer. He's currently 17 months cancer-free and undergoing a groundbreaking three-part surgery project at the Mayo Clinic. Mm -hmm. to implant a custom titanium heat and regain the four inches his cancer took away from him. That's right. Hmm. Trent is also an entrepreneur and co-founder of a successful snack company in New Zealand that started with Kettle Corn Business. Mm -hmm. And that company is number two in New Zealand, by the way, popcorn. So you're thinking popcorn... <laughs> You think Trent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you know what? A lot of people call me Mr. Popcorn in New Zealand. It's quite funny. <laughs> oh, really? That's, that's, that's Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Hey, hey what is, what, you know, <laughs> what could be sexier, right, than being called Mr. Popcorn? I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, you can imagine. You can imagine. <laughs> whatever, whatever. Right? Mr. Popcorn. Yeah, yeah whatever. It could popcorn. be worse, man. <laughs> <laughs> and he's here to share his, his, his incredible story of Resilience, perseverance, and how he fights happiness amidst life's toughest challenges. So let's welcome Trent Brooks. Welcome, Mr. Trent Brock. Trent Brock. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it's all good, Trent, man. Hey, I'm an hey let's have some, I'm an we're gonna have some fun today. Man. It's gonna be fun, man. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. So how are you doing today? How are you doing today? Man, I have to tell you, man, I honestly, I don't know if you can hear it in my voice already, but I am on a high today. I had to go in this morning, have my scans done, officially scans, you know, to make sure I'm clear. And I'm officially 18 months cancer free, man. So we're on a Whoa. milestone today. Whoa. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm even more excited than I normally am because, man, I'll tell you what, after you've been told you weren't going to make it, and, you know, by several doctors and you do make it every day you wake up, you're pretty dang excited. But today is a super exciting day. This this is what's celebrating. This is what's celebrating. There's this I, song in there's this song in my country that I like very much. It's like, uh, let me see if you understand what I'm saying. But it's in okay. DJ, say, we go celebrate. We go pop champagne. Did you, you get what I just said? I just said we're going to celebrate with some champagne. That's right. Yeah, exactly. 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 I'm I so am. Happy I am. You, man. Thanks, man. I'm so happy for you. Come on. Two years. You know, it, two years is a big, big market. Two years, man. Things start to change, right? The doctors start to change some of their, some of their, you know, predictions. And they start to say, oh, okay. All right. Well, finally, yeah, this is okay. You know, so, you know, two years. So we're close. I already know. I already know. They just need yeah. to, they just need to see a test every few months to say, yeah, okay, you're still clear, but I already know I'm clear. I'm clear. I'm done. I'm done. Three with that. hip surgeries. Three hip surgeries. Oh, I had I had about Bro, hip surgeries. Time. I had about I've had nine major hip surgeries. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And I've had Whoa. a lung surgery, major lung, and then a major um major pancreas surgery as well. So yeah. That's survival. You just do what you gotta do, man. Anyone exactly. can do it. Anyone can do it. You may not think you can do it, but if you get into that position and you ain't got a choice, you'll figure it out. You know, you okay. figure it out. Anyway, it's hey a choice, guys. right? Yeah. yeah. Hey, guys. So if you're talking about entrepreneurs, this is one of the entrepreneurs that I, I respect. Like he did like three hip surgeries and he's here live and direct trying to tell you that you can make it. Don't get depressed. Don't go down. Don't go down because of those little things that are nothing. Sure. Mm -hmm. Come on, three hip surgeries. And his popcorn business is popularly called Mr. Mr. Corn, right? Popcorn. Mr. Popcorn, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Yeah. Popcorn. His business is number is ranking number two. His popcorn is number two in New Zealand. I mean, think about it. He, yeah. he has done so much for himself. Let's celebrate it. 
<laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, man. But you know, I'm not here for me today. I'm here. I'm here for your audience. And what I want to do is give them some things, some encouragement, inspiration, motivation, and some tools and things that they can take away today to help them in some way in their life. Okay. We do that. We win. We do that. Yeah, we all okay. win. That's the thing. Right? All right. That's yeah. cool. That's cool. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. So I'll go to the business of the day. So I wrote down a few questions. So I put down okay. a few, I put down a few questions that I want to ask you today. Okay. So I think, are you ready for me? Because I'm shooting. I'm ready, man. Hey, hey, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm okay. Ready. Okay. All right. <laughs> so uh, can you walk us through your experience with cancer and how you mentally prepared yourself to beat it despite the odds? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So a little background is, you know, I'm obviously not from New Zealand. I'm from the States, but I'm a world traveler and I've been a lot of places. I've lived places and worked places. And I ended up in New Zealand. And uh, long story short, I, I started this popcorn business and I started with a guy that I met, you know, in the boxing gym, which is kind of a crazy story already. And he and I put some money together and we started this thing on the weekends and it grew and grew and grew um, to a manu manufacturing business. And so we supply New Zealand and some international countries and islands like Singapore and Malaysia and wow. um, some stuff like in the in the Middle East and Taiwan and, and, and some other countries. So. I'm working away. I'm just working away. And, uh, you know, kind of a workaholic when it's your own business, you don't have kids or a family. That's what you do. You work. And so um, I'm in the factory and I start limping around. I go to a couple doctors and um, they all tell, tell me I've got a torn butt muscle. And finally, I go into the hematologist for some blood work in the hospital. She gets an x-ray. A week later, they tell me I have cancer. Okay. So um, I went through, I went through I had major hip, uh, major hip surgery, and um, they removed all the cancer in the bone and part of my leg and my butt and everything. And um, I got through that. My parents were there for that. I got through that, went back to work, and uh, my parents went home. And then I had another scan, which was pancreas and lung cancer. And uh, my parents weren't there. And then they scheduled the surgery like in May of 20, uh, 2020. And um, and my parents couldn't come because it was locked down for COVID. So then I had pancreas surgery, which was a misdiagnosis. So they cut out half my pancreas and spleen for nothing. And then I had lung cancer, which was cancer. And so they took that out. And then my next scan, I did again. No, 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 you do have lung cancer. So this has all progressed through about a year, year and a half of, of cancer and surgeries and all these things. And um, <clears throat> so I'm kind of trying to get to the part where we want to talk about you know, what happened with me. So finally, after I got pancreas cancer, you know, that's a death sentence, man. I went to several doctors, private doctors, public doctors, all the doctors, okay, my my, uh, my orthopedic, my lung doctor, they all told me pancreas cancer, you're done with, okay? And so I kind of sat around the house in New Zealand for a couple of weeks thinking, well, I'm going to die. They gave me a year. I have a report that says you got one year left to live, Okay. And I started thinking about, okay, well, I'm going to sit around here for one year and I'm going to die or what? And, and the way it was, was with my parents, since they weren't there, they would be on, they would be on um, the speakerphone with most of my meetings with the doctors. They would listen after the meetings we would talk. And so um, after one of them with the pancreas doctor, we're sitting there talking, you know what? And I kind of decided, I don't care about me anymore. I'm tired. I'm going to give up. I hadn't done a whole lot to change. Okay, I hadn't done many changes in my life. I just kept kind of going back to work, doing my thing and just fighting it. And what, you know, the doctors come in and tell me I need to have a surgery. I come in and have the surgery. I do my thing, go back to work, back and forth, work through in the hospital, work through the hospital, have meetings with my team, with suppliers. They would come into the hospital, whatever. I don't care. Okay, I had to work because I have my only one, I'm the one running the business. So I was kind of giving up on life. And I thought, you know what? I don't care about me anymore. I'm giving up. Thought about that for a couple of weeks. And one day I was on the phone with my parents. And I'll tell you, this was a major turning point. I'm on the phone with them. And I get, my parents are lovely people. They are awesome. I have great parents. I'm very, very fortunate and lucky. They're very supportive. They're great people. And um, I just feel, I hear, I hear the despair. I hear the sadness. I hear the hopelessness that they can't do anything, that their son is dying. And they know it. And I know it. We all know it. I could look in the mirror and tell, man. I could look in the mirror. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I'm dying. I'm definitely dying. 
And uh, I made a decision at that point. I said, you know what? I'm going to live for them. I'm going to figure this out somehow, some way. I don't know how, but now, now I've made a decision. What, what was my decision? I'm going to live or I'm going to die. I'm going to live. Okay. Well, why are you going to live? I'm going to live because I want to outlive my parents. I had a friend that had committed suicide um, back in November of 2019. And I had a best friend that died of cancer um, in 2019 or 2018, 2018 of, of a cancer as well. So, well, you know, I watched them. I watched their parents bury them, you know, and it was sad. And I thought my parents are not going to bury me. I'm burying my parents down the road. That's what's going to happen. That's what we're going to do. So now I got a reason. Okay, well, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to do this? So I decided, well, I better I better change some things in my diet because I'm doing, I know I'm doing things in my diet that aren't good. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't cooking for myself. Okay. I was in a, I was in a, I was in a situation at home where the kitchen was really wasn't access to me. So I'm eating fast food all the time, drinking sodas, blah, 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 blah. So I changed some things in my diet. Okay. And there were some other things I had to change. Right. Yeah. I knew that I had to start going back and start getting back in shape. I had to start going to the gym. That's simple. These are the simple things, right? You change some things in your diet. You change it. You change some of the things that you're doing. What are you going to do physically? You need to get some exercise and you do some of those things, this and that, whatever. But the real battle, the real battle was my heart. Okay. My heart yeah. wants to live, but my head saying, how are you going to do this? How? Every doctor, all the doctors are saying you're going to die. You look yourself in the, you look yourself in the mirror. You look like you're dying. You feel like you're dying. You're dying. So what are you going to do about this? How are you going to fix this? Because I'm practical. I'm common sense. I see the facts. These are what's going to happen. That's how it's going to be. I'm a realist. I'm a realist, if you will. Okay. And so what I had to start doing is I had to change my mindset. And, and within that, I believe spiritually within change your mindset, within your mindset, there are two things. You got your mental, what are you going to do and how are you going to do that? And you got spiritual, right? And your emotions. Well, hold on. Did you, did you, you said mental and what? So, so when you have your, you know, to change your mental mindset, I think a part of that is your emotions and your feelings. Okay. And you, and yeah. spiritually, I think it's wrapped up into that. And, and so, um, so that's that to me, that was the real yeah, Sorry, Emotions, feelings, and spirituality, right? That's what you oh, said. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want it to push you. Yep. That All wraps right. up everything going on in your head, in my opinion. Okay. So spiritually, right. Spiritually, there's some things you can do externally, right? So, right, I, I've always been a Christian. I've always had a God, you know, God in my life and Jesus in my life and, and the Holy Spirit. But, you know, I've had some times where I'm either close or I'm not so close. I'm kind of far away or I'm not. Well, this kind of stuff makes you get a little closer. So let's talk about let's talk about the spiritual part a little bit, right? Exactly. Uh, I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah. So externally was easy, right? You make some decisions. You start going back to church. Okay. I feel like that was a good decision. So I started going back to church, okay? And I started building my spiritual foundation again, right? And, and in that, this is what I did as well, okay? And it all wraps up into kind of the mental, okay? And the emotional will all kind of wrap into this. So if I wasn't at work, if I wasn't at work, I decided I was doing something that was going to be productive towards trying to give me a just a better chance at living, better than 5%. That was my goal, because I thought that if I can start winning every day, if I can start winning every day and I win more days than I lose, I can beat this cancer. Well, how do you do that? How do you do that? So if I wasn't at work, I decided I was going to do something positive to change my mind. And how did I do that? So I started listening to Christian music again. So I was listening to all sorts of music, but I made a choice to listen to some Christian positive uplifting music. If you aren't a big, you know, believer and a God person, whatever, not a big deal. Listen to something that's positive. Listen to uplifting music that has a good reasoning, that has good points, that has something good in it. Okay. Have that in the background going on while you're doing something. Let's say have that in the background while you're going on a walk. You're getting some fresh air. Maybe you're at the beach. Maybe you're at the gym, whatever you're doing. Okay. If I wasn't doing that, I was doing some kind of self-help something. So I was listening to sermons in the Bible in the New Testament about how the, all the miracles did. And I would listen to those day and night. I would turn them on and I would have something going and I would play it all night long. I would play it while I was asleep. I, I would wake up to it, okay? 
I would, I would, on my way to work, I was listening to it. And I get to work, I do some work. After work, same thing for the routine. I did this for months and months and months, okay? I had to change my mindset. I had to strengthen my mind. What are some of the other things that I had to do, right? I did some self-help stuff, right? I started, and I started doing, so, you know, this, this is, and I, and I went through a depressive time as well, okay? I've been through depression b- before, like I've been through clinical depression before, um, diagnosed and everything. And, and it was mainly related to my business. Some of it was related to, you know, how I, how I saw myself in life and, and some things from my childhood, nothing to do with my parents, but some other things about how I felt about myself about my self-image, about what, you know, I, how I was in social settings, uh, what I thought about, people thought about me. And, 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 you know, and this thing with my business, very much a challenge. And it made me doubt. And it gave me, it made me doubt myself, made me doubt my self-confidence for years. Was I going to be able to do it? Could I do it? I didn't think I could do it. It was such a challenge and such a fight. I'm on top of it now, but it took me years to get on top of it. Years and years of, can I do this? Am I good enough? Am I not? So, there was some depression that went on, obviously, with, with my health um, diagnosis. But there's also depression that I think I had related to my childhood and my history when I thought about myself and all those things. So, you know, what did I do? What would I do to kind of get myself out of this depressive state? Well, here's some of the things that I've learned to cope with. Um, I sit there and I actually talk to myself out loud positively, okay? And I say things out loud. So if I'm in a deep depressive state, okay? I start saying things to myself like, I'm happy to be alive today. I'm happy that I'm breathing. I thank God that there's fresh air. I can go outside. I have a car. I have a roof over my head. I'm happy for this. I'm thankful for that. Simple, 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 simple things, right? Then I start changing my mindset, okay? And then, and then, you know, there's some other things. Um, I would go outside. I get some fresh air. Change my setting. Do not change where you are. Change where you are. You have to get out of your place. So for me, one of my worst places was my bedroom, right? So I would wake up. I could wake up having a panic attack, right? That's the worst way to wake up. Have you have you had panic attacks? Happy life? Yeah. So I wake I up thinking. in the middle of the night or wake up in the morning, right? Three, four, five in the morning having a panic attack. That's the worst, man. It's the worst. It's the worst way to wake up because you're already behind, right? You're all worked up. Your system's all worked up. When your system and your body gets worked up and you get and your breathing's not right and your heart's beating and everything, that gets your mind going. Yeah. You gotta settle down your you gotta settle down your body before you can settle down your mind. Well, how do you do that? Deep breathing, right? Four seconds, breathe in, four seconds, hold, four seconds, breathe out. And I do that repeatedly. Do that repeatedly and realize and realize what the doctor told me. You're having a panic attack. It's okay. It's all right. Your body is having a panic attack. Your mind doesn't have to go there. So let's bring the level down, bring it down. And then I start doing my thing, being positive, thinking about positive thoughts, get myself settled down, right? So get myself settled down. And my toughest thing was like thinking about at work, like how am I going to, what, I got all this stuff to do at work. And I was so overwhelmed, right? With the, everything I had to do, because in a small business, you have to do everything, man. You got to run all the business. You got to be, you got to be the HR department, you got to be accounting, you got to be collections. You got to be, you got to be operations, you got to be forecasting. You got to do everything. You got to fix the machines. You got to do everything. How am I going to do everything? <laughs> well, I make a list. I get my list out, right? And this is what I do. Small wins, small things. I would not think about everything I got to do for the day. If I haven't thought about everything I got to do for the day, I get myself overwhelmed. I start having a panic attack again. Keep it simple. What am I going to do? The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get my butt up and I'm going to go have a shower. When I have a shower, I'm going to say, good job you had a shower. Little win, good job. You did the right thing. And the way I would do that is I would sit there and I could lay there for an hour or two trying to talk myself to get into the shower, right? Just that simple thing. Because I'm thinking, I got to go to the shower, then I put my clothes on, then I got to go to work. Oh, no, when I get to work, I'm going to have a meltdown, right? So I get myself in the shower. And this is how I would do things. This is what worked for me. These are some of my coping mechanisms. What I would do is I'd do myself a 10 count, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1. When I get to that, get up, <laughs> get up, man. Oh, get your yeah. butt in the shower and get up, right? Yeah, I, count, go. I count from 100 to 1. <laughs> That's too much. That's too high, man. You got two lungs to think about it. You got to start with 10 down, from 10 down. And no, 100 no, down, so, you got to think about 100 things. You're going to psych yourself out, bro. <laughs> so, okay, so my, maybe it's in the opposite direction. Maybe I'm, I'm waiting for someone and he's, okay. he's not yet there. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm going to give this person this amount of time, man. 
after mm-hmm. I count to 100 and it doesn't show, I'm out of here. So I'll start counting in my mind, one, two, three, four. Once I get yeah. to 100, I'll leave. Okay. Hey, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough, about. right? Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. And hey, one of the other things that I would do is, co- you know, that I learned about depression is this is this is a temporary deal. It's not permanent. Life has ups and downs. It does. There's nothing you can do about it. But, you know, the, and you can only control what you can control about you. And most of the time, those things you control are your attitude, right? And how yeah. you perceive things. Other than that, you can't control Jack, man. You can't control <laughs> lots of things. I mean, it's just life, right? It is what it is. So you have to do the best you can do with what you got. And and life has the ups and life has the downs. Life has way, way ups, which is great. Life has the downs, which is not so good. And you have to realize that everything is always temporary. This too shall pass, right? This too shall pass. And I'll tell you, every time, because I've probably been back and forth in, in depressive states probably four or five times in my life. Some of them last for months. But I'll tell you what, I've learned about it and I've learned about me. And every time I start to get into one, it's shorter and shorter and shorter. It's less and less and less. And I know that because I know, okay, I know how to do this. I know how to cope. I know what I need to do. And I start minimizing those things and making that 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 depression part less and less and less. You know, something, obviously, this is a very much an obvious. If you think you have depression, okay, you should get online and you should find an online test and you should take it. And if you have a decent score, you need to go to the doctor. You need to go to the doctor and you need to see and you need to take the professional test with the doctor or a counselor or whoever, okay? Let them diagnose you. And hey, man, some people need medication. Some people don't. Actually, I was on medication for quite a while. You know, and luckily, I got to the point in life that I didn't need it. But I did need it there for a couple of times. Even for years, I needed it. And it's okay. It's okay if you need something to help you for a while. Something you need for a while, but maybe you understand it's not permanent. It's like anything else, right? You know, I just had a major hip surgery. that I'm trying to get this link back on my leg. Well, temporarily, I'm on some medications that I won't be on forever to help from inflammation to help with the pain, to help make sure that I, I've got thin blood and I'm not having a blood clot. But I know in time, these are going to go and I'll be off those medications. Just like a depressive medication, it's the same kind of thing. Man. You'll be on it for a while. And then after some time when you're ready and you and your doctor or your counselor are ready, you'll be off of it, you know? Um, so let me think. I had a list of some things that, you know, I kind of thought about that, that would be helpful. And uh, let me look through some of these here. Okay. So, um, Another thing I would do, okay, is when you get depressed, right, you want to be alone, you probably close the, close the windows down, you want it dark, and you want to do all that. Okay, you want to do that? Do that for an evening. But make sure that you have something scheduled, and you have to call your friends, and you have to say, hey, I want to do something, even though you don't. You have to. You've got to make a phone call. Call your friends. Go out with your friends. Your good friends. Your negative, crappy, terrible friends, get rid of them. You have to. Your positive people, people that you're good around, people that make you laugh. I mean, these are these are some of these things are very simple, but I'll tell you, they're things that I use. And what I would do as well, okay, to help me, I would put something out into the future. I would make a trip, I would plan something, I would do something that I knew that made me excited, maybe a vacation to Cancun, I don't know. Maybe a trip to Africa, I don't know. Whatever it may be, plan something out there in the future that you have to look forward to that you've done before that you like to do. Put it out there. Get it on the schedule. Write it down. Okay. Another thing I like to do is when you get depressed, you think of all this long future around in front of you. Something that's insurmountable that you can't handle. You ain't got to worry about that. We're living in today. It's not about what happened yesterday. Not about what's going to happen tomorrow. It's about having the world right now. It's like me and you talking right now. The only thing I can think about doing right now is talking to you, happy life. Right? So you're living in the right now, you're living in this minute, you're living in this day. What do you got to do today? Do enough today to end the day to where you're happy with yourself, okay? And you did enough. Another thing I would do is no matter what, no matter what, I keep my routines to a level, to a degree, okay? If you can't go to work all day, go to work for some time. That's what helps me, keeping my routine, okay? I'm going to go to work. I'm going to do some work. Maybe I can't work all day. Maybe don't be too hard on myself. Don't be too hard. You went to work, you did some things, you got some things accomplished, came home, had a rest. I like to go to the gym, go do some exercise, go for a walk, ride your bike, get out there, get some fresh air, whatever that may be. Then go out with your friends for the evening. Keep those routine things going on that you do. Because if you pull all back and you're sitting at home and you're all by yourself, you're never going to get out of that, man. You're never going to get out of it. So, um, 
you know, those are some of those are some of the things. Um, you know, I could keep going or you can ask me um about some of those, you know. Um okay, yeah, I was doing a good job, I guess, you know. I yeah, you will. I haven't well, talked much about depression, man. Honestly, I haven't talked much about my depression stuff. Mostly people want to talk about how you beat cancer. Okay. Or, you know, my entrepreneur stuff. Not many people want to talk about my depression stuff that I have. So this is a new, this is a new bit for me, but I'm open. I'm open to talk about it. And, you know, like I'm an open book. You can ask me anything you want to. And I'll say as honest as an answer I can give you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, you said it, no, but honestly, um, one, one thing you said that I really caught when we were talking about emotions, feeling, and spirituality. Yeah. Um, to me, um, spirituality makes a lot of sense where, you know, there's this word people use. So I, I always tell people, um, I think you should just go for what works for you. You get to a state in life where you definitely need higher powers. Whatever yes. your higher power is, is cool. I don't care what your higher power is. Yes. I know what mine is, but find yours and do yours. If yours is the universe and karma, cool. Exactly. Then put that out there, right? Put the good karma exactly. out there then, right? Exactly. You got exactly. it. We're thinking of like, anyway, yeah. uh, that's a nice one. So uh, let, let me go into your business a little bit. Sure. So okay. you started uh, a successful kettle corn business in New Zealand, which is now one of the most popular snack companies in the country. Absolutely. Number yeah. two in quotes. Uh, so can you share some of the biggest challenges you faced and uh, while building this business and oh. how you overcame them? Gosh, man. Let me think about this for a minute. Okay. Um, you know, one of the biggest challenges I think was I'm very, very hard on myself, okay? I'm a type A personality and my expectations that I have myself are almost, are, 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 are not even realistic, okay? What I expect out of myself. What someone else expects out of me. See, you're you're sitting here saying you you have a successful business and you you know you're a top snack food company. I am, I am. But why why can't I be number one? I want to be number one, right? Mm -hmm. And so then I then I sit here and think about well, you know, it's good that you're number two, but why am I number one? And I'm not number one for some realistic reasons because the guy in front of me has been in the popcorn business for fifty years and I've been in it twelve, so he's beat me. You know, he's beat me forty years worth of you know. He's in the 40 year race. He's way ahead of me, you know? So there's some things. So, you know, I'm very hard on myself. And one of the things that I had to do and, and what I still have to do is I say, okay, you know what? This is my dream. And this is an unrealistic dream. But if I get to this, if I get to this point, I'm okay with that. I can accept that. Right. So let me just take the example. I want to be number one. My dreams to be number one. Right. But I honestly, I can accept that I'm number two. I'm doing fine. Things are doing fine. My staff are good. You know, I, I'm, I, I help, you know, I have about 12 to 15 staff. They've all got kids and families. I support probably 50, 60 people in New Zealand. Help put a roof over their head, a warm, nice house to live in. You know, got food on the table. The, the, you know, they got money to buy their kids Christmas presents and birthday presents. That's an awesome thing. I should be proud of that and, and say, hey, you know what? This is nice. This is cool. And quit being so hard on yourself about not being number one. Be happy with where you are. Accept this. Accept where you are. So that's been a really, a really big challenge for me all the way through. And um, gosh, man, you know, I'm not, I'm an IT guy. Okay. I was trained to do IT work in business and computers and, 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 and IT in business setting. I'm not trained to be a popcorn maker. I don't even make popcorn. I don't know about packaging and machinery and how to fix machines and and dude i didn't want to have staff i was a lone gun man i was a lone wolf you hire me and me only i'll be on your team but i won't run a team now i've run all these people i got all these staff i got all their headaches i got all their things to deal with you know so you know one of the things is i was i had to figure out and understand i was in the unknown i was constantly living in the unknown how's this going to go where are we going to find the next customer how are we going to pay our bills this week? How are we going to pay our bills this month? You know, all these kinds of things. But you know what? It always has worked out. I have kept the same principles the entire time, which is I'm, I, I'm giving, I'm open, and, and you know, I, I'm a good person. And I believe in you give out, it comes back when it's supposed to. 
you know, and, and I try not to worry about the things that I can't fix right now, that I can't fix in two weeks. What am I going to do today? How am I going to get this fixed today? How much popcorn do I need to make today to have a good day today? Not in two weeks. Not what's going to happen. Having down in a month. What am I going to do today? How am I doing this today? How am I fixing this today? So, you know, I think some of the things I already talked about that I've talked about, to, you know, with depression, I think I use some of those in my daily life as well. Probably to help keep me from going back to depression, really, you know? Wow. That's awesome. Honestly, I, I must say this, like, I, I'm, I'm speaking to, to those out there. If you're someone who has given up of something because you think you're, you've gone through too much, <laughs> then you need to look at the guy on the screen. <laughs> Someone who faces, uh, who, who, who fought with life, I mean, despite having to undergo three surgeries, uh, he's still standing here today. It's it's a testament, like, it's a testimony rather, like your yeah. perseverance and determination. It's also a proof that every other person out there can push and, and make sure the impossible is done because the impossible is possible. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know you know, one of the things that helped me is, you know, um, if I had a problem or I have an issue or something, um, I like to go out on the internet and find somebody or something that has done this. Okay. So for example, with me and my leg, with this bone cancer, mm -hmm. they had to take out so much bone that, that my leg is, is four inches shorter than the other. Okay. Well, I found a guy, I found a book with this guy. And he he fell he he, he fell off a two story balcony, two two or three story balcony. Broke his neck, couldn't walk. Okay, told he was never going to walk again. Well, I read his book. He walks now. He figured it out. He didn't listen to the doctors. He didn't believe what they said. He said, "You know what? I'm different." And he figured out something. He figured out a way that he could walk. And he and he trained himself. And he started little by little, right? Little bit of the fingers, moving the fingers. Then he started with the hand. Started moving the hand. Then he started with the arm. He's moving the arm. Finally, he's walking. So I went out there and I found some stories or I find somebody that's had this problem and they've overcome it. Okay. And how did they overcome it? And I say, you know what? If they can overcome it, I can overcome it too. I know I can. Wow, control. that's powerful. You know? So it's that it's that easy. If one other person did it, then one more can do it. Why not? Right? Exactly. That's it, man. And so I find that story. And then you know what I do when I start getting sad? And start thinking about this leg and thinking, oh, I'm going to be in a wheelchair. I'm going to be on crutches for the rest of my life. No, I'm not. I go back. I listen to that book again. I read that book again. I say, you know what? Then I get myself back again, right? Get myself back again on the right track thinking, well, if he did it, I can do it. And then, you know what? Here's the thing, right? We're human beings, man. We aren't perfect all the time. Don't be hard on yourself. You had a bad day. You heard some terrible, terrible news. Okay, something you can't accept. Take the day off. Don't make a decision today. You got your emotions wrapped up, your thoughts wrapped up, everything's wrapped up. Don't make a decision when you're all wrapped up in your head and your emotions. What I like to do is say, I'm taking a timeout. I'm taking a timeout for the rest of the afternoon. If I'm taking a timeout, what I'm doing is I'm going to the gym or I'm going outside for a walk. I'm going to the beach. I'm doing one of these things. I'm meeting up with my friends. I'm having a good chat with them. I'm going to forget about whatever, whatever it is. And this is how I'm going to deal with it. Tomorrow morning, when my head is fresh and I'm clear, that's when I'm going to think about it. And I'm going to give myself three or four options. Okay. I'm going to think about that. And then I'm picking one and I'm going for it. So by the end of the next day, by the end of the next day, I've got a decision. I'm not going to sit here and wait around and think about it. I've got a fresh head. I had a good night's sleep. I got some food in me. You know, I got a good meal in me. I'm going to think about this a little bit. Three or four options. What's the best option? Oh, I can't decide. I'm talking to my counselor. I'm calling my best friend that I trust that I've had for a long, long time. I'll say, hey, look, I'm having a problem with this. I can't think. I'm not sure what to do. Give me your best advice. What do you think? And hey, you know what? Sometimes it's, it, I make my final decisions for my life. No one else does. I do. I decide everything. I decide if I'm living or dying. I decide what I'm eating. I decide where I'm going. I decide everything. But hey, I like to take some advice sometimes. <laughs> take a little advice on board, right? Sometimes I can't figure it out. I'm in this head thinking, oh, this way or that way or this or that or oh, that. no, no, no. Talk it out. Get it out of your head. Talk it out. Talk to your friend, and hey, trust somebody, and say, hey, you know what? Help me make a better decision. Okay, I'm making the final decision, but help me, right? So, you know, I think that's some of the stuff that I do. Some of the same stuff that I've helped get myself out of depression. The same tactics and tools that I use 
to help me get through my business and help me solve problems and issues and concerns or things that happen in my business that I can't solve. Same kind of thing. A lot of the same tools, a lot of the same principles, just a little applicable in different in different ways. Okay, okay, okay. These are really inspiring words. I'm still going oh, man. to cool. yeah. I'm chewing it all and I'm taking off in one chunk. Um, <laughs> yeah, honestly. So there's this question I wanted to ask. Um, I had skipped it, but I think I need to go back to it because along the line, along while you talk, you answered a lot of questions. Like okay. you even knew what I was going to ask. So, but I wanted to um throw more light on this so okay. can you discuss how you cope with these challenges and what tools or resources help you through these difficult times um so um say that say it again a ask me that question again uh and I, you know i feel like i've answered some of that but ask it again yeah. let me see if i let me see if i've got some other things for you yeah i know that's why i'm coming back to it okay. so okay, so, sure. so the idea of the idea is this right when we when we come on Find Happiness Podcast, we try to see how we can solve people's problems. So every person has a unique problem. And I don't think that it's just that person that's going through that problem. Because somewhere, somewhere in the world, someone will be going through you know, that similar thing. So I try to see that, that I can highlight these things as much as possible. So people sure. see it as clearly as possible. So it solves okay. this problem. Yeah, okay. but that's why I'm coming back to it. Okay. So I said, okay, can you sure. discuss, you know, coming back to, you know, you've been through three rounds of cancer, each with mm -hmm. um, yeah. its um, unique challenges, right? Sure. And so sure. can you discuss how you coped with these challenges? Sure. Um, cancer is, cancer is, cancer is a bitch. It's, it's disturbing it is, the whole world. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. The funniest thing is it just happens sometimes even um, when, when, Medically, they'll say it's caused by this, it's caused by this. Sometimes these things just happen, and sure. you can't really identify or say this is where I went wrong and all that. Sure. So, so the can yeah, the cancer thing. I'll tell you, man. You, you know, it got so heavy. It really got so heavy with all these doctors. Okay, and, and you know, my staff, and you know, you, you know, my business partner, everybody is like treating me like this, this precious thing. You know, dead man walking with one year left, and. <clears throat> And I'll tell you, it got super heavy, man. And, you know, it's this big deal. You know, like it's the biggest deal in life. Are you going to live or die? That's the biggest thing that's going to happen to you. You were born, and the next biggest thing that's going to happen to you is you're going to die. And everything in between, well, is in between. And so um, the thing, it got so super heavy. And you know what? I started thinking about it like, you know what? This is the game of life. It's the game of life. That's what people say, right? You've heard that saying before. It's just the game of life. And I started thinking about it for me, like a football game. For you, it could be a different game. For you, I don't know what game it could be. It could be a board game. I don't know what the heck it could be, okay? But for me, it was the game of life. And my favorite, one of my favorite games is American football. So I started thinking about this like, this is an American football game. And so how, how do I deal with this? I'm in the third quarter. I'm in the third quarter and I'm losing. The score, I am down. The score is really bad, but the game ain't over yet, right? So I got a quarter and a half to play. So let's let's call a timeout. Let's call a timeout. We ain't going to play this play. Let's call a timeout. Let's go to the sidelines, and let's talk to the coach. Or I'm kind of the coach. Let's get some new players in the game. So, for example, for me, one of my new players was my diet. Okay, this is my physical player. Because we talked about some, there's some physical, there's mental you know, they're spiritual, you know, whatever, all those, there's different things. So one of, one of my simple, just to keep this simple for you. So one of my players is the physical, or, or I'm sorry. Okay. So one part of the physical is my diet, right? So my physical guy, I'm playing my, what's in my diet. So for me is I cut out sugary drinks. Cancer is, is fed off sugar, especially refined white sugar. Okay. So I cut out sugar and I cut out empty carbs. Good carbs are okay, but empty carbs like white bread and, and things like that. So I cut out sodas, sugars, sugar, and, and uh, carbs, empty carbs, and uh, desserts. Okay, simple. That was one step. So I took that player out and I put the next player in. Okay, well, I'm going to do better in the next play on the next quarter, right? So I thought about it like that. And it didn't, and in the game of life, 
Okay. I'm playing football. I love football. So I'm training. I'm just practicing. I'm just practicing. If I didn't do good on this play, I'm going to call a timeout. I'm going to go to the sidelines and I'm going to change something else out. So, for example, what are the other things I changed out? Well, in my spiritual life, right? I didn't feel like I was as close to God that I, in the Holy Spirit, that I felt like I needed to be. So how did I change that? Well, I made a conscious effort to start going back to church. Okay. And another thing, I made a conscious effort to start listening to some positive, uplifting messages from a pastor that I kind of think he's a good guy. Okay. So I'm listening to some of that. So I changed that out. One of the other things I did is, so people always ask me, right? Well, you had cancer three times. Aren't you scared that it's going to come back? And I'm like, I used to be, but I'm not now. And let me tell you why. Because also, I play this game as well. Life is just like a deck of cards, right? There's 52 cards in a deck. Well, I got a bag. I got some bad cards in my hand. I got three bad cards, as a matter of fact. Well, I played those three, and I flicked them all. And I got a new card in my hand. And that card is better than the card I had. So is the cancer coming back? No, it can't come back because I played that card already. So now I got good cards in my hand, right? And so no, it can't come back. So that's, that's a few of the simple things that I use for me that we hadn't talked about yet that have helped me. It's the game of life. Don't get so heavy. It's just a game. It's fun. You're going to mess up. You're not going to win every play. You can't win every quarter, but you can win the game. And the game ain't over until you decide it's over. And then, hey man, the, you know, the you know the the cards of the cards in the deck of life or whatever you want to call it. So wow, yeah, the game is not over. Never, it ain't over till you want it to be over, and you yeah, have the choice in that, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I think that people shouldn't give up on their dreams and aspirations, or it's within their reach if they are willing to fight for. For their dreams, honestly, okay. I, I I think people should still keep pushing forward and believing that they have strength and resilience to overcome every obstacle. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Wow, man, you did a lot of fights. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, man, let me tell you, you know this stuff, and I'll tell you, man, like what I, what I'm telling you, these simple things that I used to do, man. It took me months. It took me probably a year year and a half. I mean, like dedicated dude, saturate my head with, you know, self-help guides. I read books about people that beat cancer. I would look online and read stories of people that beat cancer. I would read stories about entrepreneurs, about made it successful when they had lost everything, all these kinds of things. And, you know, read this stuff and get myself excited, right? And say, hey, you know what? If they did it, I can do it. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. A little bit, you got you to gotta work hard. You don't win every day. But can you win most days? And if you win most days and you step up and you keep stepping up, you will you will get up that ladder and you will meet, you will reach your goal, whatever it may be, you know? Well, so <laughs> I'm speechless. Honestly. I'm speechless. All right. I, I have really thought about the pain, thought about no pain, no gain, though. Uh, you've had to go through what, what you you you've been through. And Absolutely. here you are telling the yeah. world that impossible is not in. Well, and you know, and, and I'll tell you, man, you know, so this leg thing that happened, the doctor in New Zealand cut out all the cancer. He did a good job, right? But he left me with nothing. Okay. He left me with no, like on my left side, there is nothing over there. There's no bone left or anything. I have about that much, an inch by inch left of my tailbone. Okay. And so when I came home, a couple of years ago, it was, we better beat this cancer. We got to beat this pancreas cancer. Or I'm going to die. So the first goal was let's beat the cancer. And it doesn't come back. So I got, uh, you know, so I got about six months cancer free and I thought, okay, well, I'm going to beat this cancer. And now I want my four inches on my leg back. Well, man, I started researching. Okay. I've emailed doctors and, and, re and people that do research and everything all over the country about my leg everybody's told me no dude everybody okay i don't know if you know but there are world renowned um you know um clinics here md anderson is a world renowned cancer clinic and they fix people with big, on everything they told me to get lost they told me don't come back okay they're yeah. like there's nothing we can do and you've had chronic infection and you're like okay so this is another thing right so i beat the cancer 
But so I beat that. And then that there was infection inside my leg that, that they had. I somehow I got in there, you know, we, with all the surgeries and everything. And we couldn't we couldn't get it fixed. I took antibiotics out of, out of, out of a, um, an IV semi permanently put into my arm three, four different occasions. OK, they put me on these antibiotics where I have to sit and take antibiotics for like two or three hours a day. Did this about three or four times. I've had like a year's worth of IV antibiotics. Couldn't fix it, man. It couldn't fix it. OK. And so um, <clears throat> finally, finally, you, you know, it, 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 it went away. OK, it, the, it went away. No one believed it was going away. It's a miracle that it went away. And um, so I got over the chronic infection and I started going to these doctors. They won't touch me, man. No, the MD Anderson guy didn't want to touch me. I went to another lady at Mayo Clinic. She gave me an option that wasn't a feasible option. All the Arkansas, all the uh, doctors in Arkansas told me no. I just had no, 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 no everywhere. But I kept going, man. I kept going. And, you know, the deal was I don't want, dude, I was in a wheelchair, okay, crutches. And then finally, after three years, man, of working and rehab and going to the gym and doing everything, they didn't even get, they don't even know, okay, they were supposed to remove this leg. This leg is not supposed to be here. The doctor was came in like three days before because the cancer kept progressing and they were trying to make an implant and it kept progressing. They make an implant. They do the x-ray and they're like, there's more cancer. This won't fit now. We have to make a new implant. They did that and did that and did that. And they finally said, we're going to cut your leg off, man. And I lost it. And my dad got involved and said, you can't cut this guy's leg off. You have to give him a chance. You don't know him. He is a fighter. He's not a quitter. If you have to cut the leg off, leg or cut it off. But you can't do it now. Not this time, Doc. If you're doing that, we're going, we're flying this kid home tomorrow on a private jet. I don't care. So he said, okay, I'll leave the leg. I'll leave the leg, but I can't guarantee it's going to function. I can't guarantee he's going to feel anything. Basically, we've cut the leg off. They split me open, buddy, from my belly button to my spine all the way to the back and halfway down my leg, okay? They cut out all the cancer and everything. They basically cut my leg off and sewed it back on and said, good luck. Well, it works, but it only works about 40, 40%, okay? And so, like I said, in the wheelchair and finally, in, after three years, they didn't even know the rehab to do, okay? I, I had to develop my own rehabilitation program, figure out what worked and didn't work over years and years, okay? Finally got myself on a cane. They told me, my. they've told me that I'm in the top 5% of functioning, what they call hemipelvectomies, pelvic removal people, ever. That's not good enough for me, right? Here I go again, mm -hmm. not good enough. I want my four inches back. So I kept researching and trying and researching and trying. Had to get rid of the infection. Finally, by a miracle of God, I got rid of that infection. Told I'd never get rid of it, okay? So- I finally got rid of it. Well, finally, you know, I'm looking for a doctor, looking for a doctor. No, 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 no. Finally, I find this guy. This is so cool. Okay. So I've been all around the world. I lived on the whole opposite end of the world. I came home to be with my parents. I found this uh, doctor in Arkansas that lives in my neighborhood. I had got to know him. And he said, I can't do, I can't do your leg surgery because I don't do that kind. But let me refer you to this guy. This guy is a University of Arkansas medical school graduate. And he doesn't, this, this guy is my local guy. He doesn't do this kind of surgery, but he, he, we figured it out. He's the one that gave me a guy that helped me get over the infection. So we got over that. I went back to him and I said, I beat the infection. Now can I get, now I want to go for the surgery. So like I said, no, nobody talked about surgery. Finally said, look, I know this guy that was, that worked under me at the university of Arkansas at Mayo Clinic. And I said, I've been to Mayo Clinic. They told me, no, he said, this is another guy you hadn't talked to. Let me call him. I'm going to have a personal talk to him, okay? So this guy now is my doctor at Mayo Clinic, University of Arkansas graduate. I live in Arkansas. From this good doctor, this local, the University of Arkansas graduate, there's all these things that work together, right? And I don't believe, I don't believe, I don't believe like it was a coincidence. I believe it's something that was meant to be. So when I see this guy, right, and I've seen him, I had a surgery, I had hip surgery, a temporary hips put in me like three, four weeks ago. And at the end of April, I go back for a permanent titanium hip. They're going to drill into my spine. Surgery never done before. Okay. Similar surgery. He's done, he's about, he's done about 10 or 11 similar surgeries. Never done this before. Custom deal. Custom implant. Okay. And um, it's going to be in all the journals. I've had four or five, I have four or five specialists in my surgery from plastic surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, uh, nerve guy, 
proctologist because all my guts and everything were all over the place hanging out because I don't have a hip. I'm telling you, man, you, you know, like you keep trying, you keep working, you don't take no for an answer and you will find what you need somewhere. It's out there. You will find it, man. And I believe that I had to do all the things that I had to do to put myself in this right position. I wasn't ready for this surgery a year ago. I'm ready now. I did. I was going to the gym. My diet's right. My head's right. I'm mentally prepared and ready. I've been through this already before. I know what it's going to take. It's miserable. It's terrible. It hurts so bad. So painful, man. And I knew what I was going to get myself into, but I wanted it. And I want that four inches back and I'm going to get it back. And I found a guy that's doing it. And so, um, you know, you just can't give up. You just can't ever give up, man. The no's are going to be out there, but you got to continue to do what you have to do to put yourself in the right position to at the right moment, at the right time, because you don't know when that's going to be, you know, only for me, only for me, God knows when that's going to be for you. It may be when the universe knows, but whatever it is, you've got to do your part because it's never going to happen. If you don't do your part, you know, I believe in mercy. Okay. I believe in grace and I believe God does mercy and has grace, but dude, God doesn't do stuff for people that are lazy and don't do nothing for themselves. Okay. You got to get out there sometime. You got to go for it, man. You know, you got to try. And I've been working out. I've been going to the gym, working out, doing stuff when no one told me I had a chance. And I'm thinking to myself, why do I keep going to the gym and rehabbing this leg? Because I just can't give up because I know, I just know deep down in here somewhere, somehow that something's going to happen and I can't give up on it. And I'm never giving up on it. And I won't give up on it until I'm in the ground dead, man. So that's how it is, bro. That's how I'm saying, you know, just keep on keeping. If something's telling you to keep on keeping, just keep on keeping because it, it will come. It will come, dude. It's taken me years, dude. I've been going through this for four years, man. 10% of my life, I've been fighting cancer and being handicapped, man. But I'm going to get better. By this time next year, you see me, you want to talk to me, I walk into a room, you won't know anything ever happened to me. Nothing. And hey, you won't eat, you I won't even ask. I won't even talk about them. You talk about my story. Yeah, yeah. Okay, man. Unless somebody wants to ask me and when they want to know, because that's when people are open, right? Not when you yeah. tell your story, but when people ask you, hey, what happened? What was this? What was that about? Then they want to know about you. You have to be patient. And then when then you can get through to people like that. That's when you get through to people, man. So we're kind of off on a little bit of everything, happy life. But hey, man, yeah. this is this is this is me, bro. This is what makes me happen. This is what makes me this, tick, you know. This so. is this is awesome. This is insights, bro. Yeah. This is raw wisdom. This is <laughs> telling people going through and fighting cancer that they can also make it. Sure. This is encouraging people. Yeah, well, man. this is absolutely why we have Find Happiness podcast. This okay. is the reason. We try to get resource persons like you and others that have been on Find Happiness podcast to tell their experiences on how they put depression to a standstill. And come on, tell me who would hear this and not think that he can he can he can also make it. Like I have this popular story I always tell. Okay. Um, someone. So I'm not um, trying to be spiritual, but I'll just use it this way. Uh, someone, okay. So someone met uh, Jesus and he said, okay, I want you to take my cross away. And I'm like, why? You want me to help you carry your cross? I'm like, okay, so let's go into a warehouse and then you can drop your cross, right? So you can pick something smaller. I said, okay. So they went into the warehouse and it was dark and he dropped his cross. And they went out and they put on the light. And then when they put on the light, it's so different all the crosses there. And like, okay, so you can pick the one you want. So he went to one small corner and picked a small cross. And then Jesus told him, hey, that was what you dropped. Mm. That was what you just dropped. Yeah. So <laughs> if you don't if you don't if you don't hear other people's stories, you wouldn't know that. You just think that um, you're you're going through the worst times in this life. Yeah. Meanwhile, <laughs> yours is multiplied times, a million times, you know. I mean, I can't imagine myself going through this, honestly, but I I, I think that you're a hero, like a living legend. <laughs> I'm, I'm very man. happy. And besides besides um, going through cancer, going through surgeries and all that, you're taking care of people, you're doing a business that's taking care of lives, feeding families, it will transcend to generations and all that, you know. I'm very proud of you, man. 
I'm thank you, Happy proud. Life, man. You're thank proud. you, Happy Life. Hey, Anybody man, I appreciate sure. you letting me come on, man. I appreciate you letting me come on and tell my story. You know, like, I hope we yeah. help somebody. I hope somebody emails you, texts you, calls you, and says, hey, I listened to that podcast, and that was helpful for me. Hey, when we win, baby, then we win, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, anyway, um, while we, we wrap up for today, I know that some people would want to reach out to you, like, sure. maybe send you emails or yeah. go to your website and all that to find out what you do and... It can be anything. So um, I most of the time try to see that my guests somehow the, the audience can always find a way to reach out to them just in case they want to have like a personal Absolutely. thing. So please, if you don't mind, yeah. can we have that contact info? Absolutely, man. No problem. You know, I'm happy to talk to anybody that can contact me personally. You know, like, you know, I'm just a regular dude. You can see there's nothing super special about me. I have a job. I've had some challenges. And, and so I'm a regular guy. And if somebody wants to talk to me, I will make some time to talk to them. Okay. So you can yeah. get me on my Facebook, Trent Brock. Okay. You can find me out there. Um, you'll know that it's me because I have a little thing about overcoming obstacles and cancer in my background. So um, that's me. And, um, or you can hit me up on, uh, on Instagram. I have an Instagram as well. Trent B Brock. And uh, you know, Hey, my email address is Trent Brock at yahoo.com. So any of those, you can hit me up, you know, contact me. And um, if I can help anybody or they want to talk or they would like to have me on their podcast or have me, have me, you know, be a, be a speaker for them on some sort or something like that. Or they, they just need some, they just need somebody to talk to. That's what I'm all about, man. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. We My pleasure, man. appreciate you. We appreciate that you had to take out your time, okay. your busy schedule. Thank you know, you. to still talk with us and see how you can encourage the world. You are a rare person and <laughs> uh, honestly. Hey, thank you. I, you I, are too, man. And hey, I want you to know, man, I know you've had a rough time too. So, you know, I'll be praying for you and your situation. I think it's awesome that you have something out here for people and you're doing something and contributing, man. And, you know, it's helpful. And you should be proud of yourself as well, man. So, yes. thank you. Thanks, man. man. Thanks, man. So uh, we're going to say our bye for now until okay. the next episode. Bye, everyone. Bye. Okay, see you, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay. Yeah.